back in the 1970s. With gas prices on the rise, American car buyers were looking for smaller, more efficient models than Detroit was manufacturing. Japanese automakers were experts in just those kinds of vehicles and they were seizing market share at an alarming rate. Ford's president wanted to rush a car into production to compete. His model was the Pinto. A gas sipper slated to cost $2,000, about $12,000 today. Ford rushed the machine through the early production and testing. Along the way, unfortunately, they noticed a design problem. The gas tank's positioning in the car's rump left it vulnerable to rear-end collisions. In fact, when the rear-end hit came faster than 20 miles per hour, not only might the tank break, but gasoline could be splattered all the way up to the driver's compartment. Fire, that meant, ignited by sparks or anything else could engulf those inside. No car is perfectly safe, but this very scary vulnerability raised eyebrows. At Ford, a debate erupted about going ahead with the vehicle. On the legal end, the company stood on solid ground. Government regulation at the time only required gas tanks to remain intact at collisions under 20 miles per hour. What about the ethics? The question about whether it was right to charge forward was unavoidable because rear-end accidents at speeds greater than 20 miles per hour happen, every day. The decision was finally made in utilitarian terms. On one side, the company totaled up the dollar cost of redesigning the car's gas tank. They calculated, 12.5 million automobiles would eventually be sold, $11 would be the final cost per car to implement the redesign. Added up, that's $137 million total, with the money coming out of Pinto buyers' pockets since the added production costs would get tacked onto the price tag. It's a big number but it's not that much per person, $11 is about $70 today. One option means only a little bit of suffering for specific individuals, but there are a lot of them. On the other side of the Pinto question. If the decision is made to go ahead without the fix, there's going to be a lot of suffering but only for a very few people. Ford predicted the damage done to those few people in the following ways. Death by burning for 180 buyers, serious burn injuries for another 180 buyers, 2100 vehicles burn beyond all repair. That's a lot of damage, but how do you measure it? How do you compare it with the hike in the price tag? More generally, from a utilitarian perspective, is it better for a lot of people to suffer a little or for a few people to suffer a lot? Ford answered both questions by directly attaching monetary values to each of the injuries and damages suffered. At the time, 1970, U.S. government regulatory agencies officially valued a human life at $200,000. That would be about $1.2 million today if the government still kept this problematic measure. Insurance companies valued a serious burn at $67,000. The average resale value on subcompacts like the Pinto was $700, which set that as the amount lost after a complete burnout. The math coming out from this is, 180 deaths times $200,000, plus, 180 injuries times $67,000, plus, 2,100 burned out cars times $700, equals $49 million.
The result here is $137 million worth of suffering for Pinto drivers if the car is redesigned and only $49 million if it goes to the streets as is. Ford sent the Pinto out. Over the next decade, according to Ford estimates, at least 60 people died in fiery accidents and at least 120 got seriously burned. No attempt was made to calculate the total number of burned vehicles. Shortly thereafter, the Pinto was phased out. No one has final numbers, but if the first decade is any indication, then the total cost came in under the original $49 million estimate.